If you're looking for one of the best infotainment systems available in a new car in America, or one of the most engaging and customizable electronic systems in a new car, then you should definitely take a look at this 2024 Ford Mustang. Let's take a look at the standard dual screen infotainment system in the dashboard, and I think you'll see why. What's not standard is the arrangement of the screens. If you get the base model, we still have the just over 12 inch instrument cluster and we still have the just over 13 inch infotainment system, but they're on two separate pop-ups rather than this one integrated binnacle running right across the front. Let's start out by taking a look at the central screen. This is running Ford's latest hardware and latest software. You'll notice that we have lots of controls on the screen rather than as physical buttons. So things like the ventilated seats, the heated seat controls, those are all right here on the screen. They're definitely snappier than you'll find in something like the Mustang Mach-E because that does not have the same version of software and hardware that we find here. Some of the transitions are deliberately delayed, which is kind of interesting. So they don't want things to just pop up and then pop out. They would rather have more of a progressive launch. So if we go over here to things like settings, you'll notice that it blanks out, then the option pops in. Inside here is where you will adjust the instrument cluster, which is also a little bit different than we've found in Ford products before, where a lot of instrument cluster adjustment was done with the steering wheel controls. So here, if you want to turn things on and off, like uh, you want to see fuel economy instead of the trip computer, you want to turn off auto start stop and see seat belt status, things like that, those are all in here rather than on the other side. This is also where you would change the theme of the instrument cluster. A lot of the vehicle customization options are accessed by hitting the pony button down here in this button bank, which pulls up the My Mustang display. This screen allows you to do all sorts of things, like change the exhaust mode if you're in a vehicle that has that particular option. You can get track apps like acceleration timers, braking performance, lap timers. Uh, you can also you know, engage the drift brake over here for track use only. It changes the mode to the track option. Line lock, of course, as well. Going back there, we'll go ahead and put the quiet mode on. Auxiliary gauges, that's a really cool function, and you can also change the way these displays work. So you can toggle between these two options there. A lot of different screens also have various options here, so you can change the way they look right with that option. This is also where you would change the cluster theme. So you can go with various different options, and they actually show you the option over here in addition to having animations on the driver side cluster where I'll show you in a bit. So we have Calm, Fox Body, Track, Sport, the Normal, theme, or you can have it matched to the drive mode, uh, which is kind of handy as well. Back here we have the custom mode. This is where you can adjust various settings based on your profile. So if you have, for instance, the adaptive suspension system, you can put that there. You can base the, your custom mode on these various settings. Now the custom drive mode is not as configurable as I thought it would be, I have to say, because if, for instance, we're in the sport mode, the only things you can adjust are things like traction control on and off, you can adjust the exhaust setting, but some of those other options are fixed in place. Going back to the home screen, over here we have the features option, this is where we find driver assistance, we have another way to get into those My Mustang screens, and you can adjust the favorite button, which is down there next to that My Mustang button down there at the bottom of the screen. You'll notice over here on this side, we also have a scrolling panel where you can roll through various options, and some of the options can be maximized, so you can actually shrink this down if you want to. For instance, if we go over here to the home screen, and we load the vehicle's navigation system, you can enlarge this. Sorry, my finger's a little dry, so it doesn't always respond to me. You can enlarge that, and then you can also shrink it back down. Again, things are definitely snappier when the screen actually reads your fingerprint. You can also do this to CarPlay, so you can expand CarPlay out. It can use the entire screen like that, or you can shrink it down and have those other modules right over there on the side. Ford also makes it easy to get back into smartphone integration. So you can hit that option right there, or you could hit that little CarPlay icon right up there on the top. Both of them will return you to the CarPlay screen. Another cool configuration touch is you'll notice that the home button is amber right there. If I go to the My Mustang screen, we can change that with my color. So you can choose a color right over here, for instance, and that will change some of the color themes in the screen. You'll notice that has now changed to blue. We can move that over to red. It's now going to be red over there, and the themes will change sort of slowly there. You can also go for the secondary theme over here. So you can choose, uh, you know, you can have green and red if you wanted to. The secondary color is sort of an accent color. So now that it's blue, you'll notice these accents down here are blue. I can move it over to green, and then 
Slowly those options will change around the car to green. This is also where you would configure the vehicle's ambient lighting, both brightness and color. Now let's look at some of those changes on the instrument cluster. You'll notice that I had the accent color set to green, so we have those green accents right there, and red was the primary color. So if I go back to the displays option on the other side, change the primary color to blue, you'll notice that it's now changing these sections down here to blue. So for instance, the color of the temperature gauge actually changes. So I can have that red, which is kind of disconcerting at the uh, first glance, or you can even make it a really light color. So for instance, now I set it to white. Uh, the changes are not quite as snappy as I had thought they would be in the software, but it does give you a lot of variation on these displays. And that is consistent across the various cluster themes. So if I move over to sport, you'll notice those colored accents are right here in this display as well. Ditto for track, where we have more of a horizontal theme for that tachometer. You can see the accent color is this little stripe right over there. Also applies, of course, to the comm theme, and, of course, that classic Fox body theme that is my favorite. With this new software design, steering wheel controls are really just limited to the OK button and the up-down toggle on the right side. That essentially just toggles through these screens in the instrument cluster. So you can see we have things like tire pressure, some extra gauge readouts there. Uh, we have the Mustang status report, seat belts. Some of that is configurable in the instrument cluster. And if you choose driver assistance, then the little driver assistance icon moves from down here to right there in the middle. Now, obviously, these options do change depending on the various different drive modes you're in. So, for instance, if we're in this track mode, that display moves over here to the right side. If we're in the normal mode, it moves back there to the center. When you move to the comm mode, it defaults to a blank screen, but you can still scroll through those options over here on the right, and then active safety is over here on the left side. Part of the Unreal Engine functionality is improved animation. So you can see as you toggle through the drive modes, the Mustang pops up, its tires are spinning, there are flames shooting off the back in various different drive modes. The color of the Mustang even changes based on the drive mode. So obviously for track duty, you're supposed to have a red Mustang. If you're on a drag strip, you want a white Mustang. Slippery conditions, uh, apparently that's a silver Mustang. And the custom one is the cool black Mustang. Be sure and sound off in the comment section below. Let me know what you think of the new two screen setup in the 2024 Mustang. This is probably coming to some other Ford models over the next few years as well. I have to admit the only thing that surprises me really here is that there is the two different screen arrangement setup because they use the exact same screens and the exact same hardware. I guess it's just a little bit of product differentiation, but I definitely prefer this one single sheet of glass look. Oh, it's not glass, of course, it is plastic in case anybody is wondering, but I do like this one sheet theme and the fact that this display is actually canted a little bit towards the driver. Again, if you get the base model, then you get two separate screen pop-ups, but the exact same hardware and the exact same software. I love the amount of customization that you find in this software. I really love the ability to change the different colors inside the theme. I'm intrigued to see what happens in the next generation of Ford's additional products, say a Ford Explorer, which we might be seeing soon, that actually might be using the same essential software that we find in here. Really intrigued about that one. Let me know what you all think, and be sure and check out the related Mustang videos that you should also be finding on the channel soon. See all of you later.